Okay, now we're going to continue solving rational equations. We'll look at these examples 6 all the way through 11. And use the index on the left if you want to skip to a particular example. And watch out because, okay, 6, 7, 8, 9. Each of these actually has two solutions. And we need to also stipulate what x cannot be because we have x's on the bottom of some of these fractions. Okay? And even even more important, examples 10 and 11. Example 10 is actually no solution, right? Example 11, we're going to have to discard um, one of the values for x, okay? And we'll only have one solution. So we'll, we'll basically come up with two solutions and then we have to discard one of them, all right? So let's start with example um, 6. And we have this situation, 1 plus 1 over x minus 2 over x squared equals 0. First of all, just you've got to stipulate what x cannot be because we're not allowed to divide by 0. So straight away we've got 1 over x, so that means that x can't be 0, right? Because if, if it was, then we'd have 1 over 0, right? How about this one? This Because of this fraction, x can't be what? What squared gives 0? Well, 0 squared is 0, so 2 over 0 squared would be 0, right? Um, just write that in there, you know, 2 over 0 squared would, of course, be 2 over 0, and that would be undefined. So we have to say that because of that fraction, x can't be 0. So basically, x can't be 0, we found, okay, from these two fractions. Anyway, our first step with solving rational equations is to make the bottoms the same. Then we need to set the tops equal and solve, okay? So if I want to make... I've got three fractions here. Let me just start and work with these two guys. How would we make these bottoms the same? I'll just multiply this guy by an x. He has x squared on the bottom, just like him. So multiply this by x over x. And now how do I make this guy have the same denominators? Well, first of all, you have to write 1 as a fraction. How can you write 1 in fraction form? 1 over 1, right? And how do I make sure he has the same denominator? Well, I'll just multiply him by x twice, right? Or x squared. See that? Okay, now we have x times x on each denominator, or x squared, right? And, of course, you can also, just to be sure, 0 is 0 over 1. And if you make 0's bottoms the same, see that? We get that, right? So all every number has been turned into a fraction. All the denominators are the same, and we can just set the tops equal and solve, and solve it. Okay. Or if you want, you know, we can put in that third step where we have one x squared. You know, one x squared plus one x minus two, and it's all over because we're just adding these fractions together. All over the same bottom of x squared is equal to you know zero x squared or zero over you know, x squared, right? So both bottom, these fractions are equal, both bottoms are the same, we can just set the tops equal. Or we could have just skipped this step and simply written down, okay, you have 1x squared, you know, plus 1x, you know, minus 2 equals 0, or 0x zero squared, let's say 0, and then just keep going and solving the equation, okay? So looking at this equation, it looks like it's a quadratic equation. Uh-oh, quadratic equation. Well, you know you can solve it by the quadratic formula, but that's a lot of work. All of these ones in this section will be able to be, you'll, you'll be able to factorize them all, okay? So always try to factorize these guys. And So basically with, with a quadratic equation, you can either factorize it or you can use the quadratic formula. You have two, 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 um, possible, two methods. But in all these, we're going to factorize them. So this is a short method. It has an x squared term, an x term, and a number. So we just list the pairs of factors of negative 2. You know, one or uh, two was one times two. Find two numbers now that that put positives or negatives on on these, so that you get a positive one when you add them. Okay. How do you do that? How about a a negative one and a positive two? Right. Negative one and positive two add to negative one, and they multiply to give negative two. So this guy can be factored to be x minus 1 times x plus 2 is equal to 0. And now we remember our trick that if, you know, if this thing, A, multiplied by this thing, B, if this times this is 0, then one of them has to be 0. Either A has to be 0 or B has to be 0. So either 
um, x minus 1 is 0 or x plus 2 is 0. Remember that? And now you've got two linear equations. You can solve each one. So this one becomes x equals 1. And then solving this one, subtract 2 from both sides. And you've got to do that because x is negative 2. So we have x equals 1 or negative 2. And we stipulated that x can't be 0. Okay. And um, neither of the answers are 0. So we do indeed have two solutions. Okay. Do need to have two solutions. And that's fine. Now we also need to check the answer. I'm just going to check. The, I'm not going to check them all in the video. So it'll take too long. But I will check this one. We've got 1 plus 1 over x minus 2 over over x uh, squared equals 0. Okay. If I check x equals 1, x equals 1, look down here. If I check x equals 1, I'll plug 1 in here and here. And now I have, um, this gives me, so I'll check x equals 1. And then I'm going to check x equals negative 2, of course. Okay. So when I check x equals 1, right, I have um, 1 plus 1 minus 2 over 1 squared is just uh, 2 over 1. So I just have, you know, 2 minus 2, and that, of course, is equal to 0. So this worked out. x equals 1 was fine, and x is negative 2. That could, so the, I would have my original equation was 1, you know, plus 1 over x um, minus 2 over x squared is equal to 0. If x is equal to negative 2, okay, I get 1 plus uh, 1 over negative 2 is negative 1 half, and then minus 2 um, over negative 2 squared is positive 4. Okay, So that gives me 1 minus 1 half, and then minus, now 2 over 4, of course, is the same thing as a half, so it's minus 1 half. Okay, So I have 1 minus a half is a half, and a half minus a half then is 0. Okay, So this also worked out. So negative 2 works out fine, as does x equals negative 2 works out fine, as is x equals 1. So the two solutions are correct. So it's a lot of work to check them, obviously. And if you could just at least check some of your answers in the homework, that would be great. And especially check them when you're taking a test, right? So example 7. x minus 5 over 2 equals 6 over x. Press pause and see if you can make these bottoms the same. That's the first step. Can you make the bottoms the same with this fraction? These fractions? Well, how, how do you write x as a fraction? x is x over 1, right? Now go ahead and make the bottoms the same. Well, just focus on these two fractions. Like, well, all you have to do is multiply this guy by a 2. Now, these denominators are the same, right? So 2 over 2. Now, I've got to also include this fraction. So he this bottom is missing what? He's missing a 2, right? So multiply him by 2 over 2. Now, both of these denominators are now missing the x, aren't they? Okay. So now every bottom has an x and a 2, so all the bottoms are the same. But you must multiply that by x over x and also this by x over x. Okay. So each bottom is the same. We can just set the top sequence. Because it's like you're just subtracting these fractions. They both have the same bottom of 2x, and then the tops would have to be equal. So the next step we can just write down is, well, x times 2 times x, of course, is 2x squared, right? Minus 5x equals 6 times 2, 12. Okay? Now, the thing is, though, that this is that this is correct. But at this point, we've got a quadratic equation, an x squared term, an x term, and an equal sign. The first step for solving a quadratic equation is to get 0 on one side. So to solve a quadratic equation, we need to get 0, uh, usually on the right-hand side. And the second step is um, to factor, factorize the left hand side, left hand side, and the third step is of course if a times b equals zero, then either a is zero or b is zero. So for all of for a lot of these examples we'll get a quadratic equation, we have to get zero on one side, factorize, and then do the a times b trick. So I need to subtract twelve from both sides, okay? And it gives me two x squared minus oh minus five x
Okay, so we should have obviously 2x squared minus 5x and then minus 12 equals 0. Once again, you know, we don't have like terms. We cannot put these guys together. We've got an x squared term, an x term, and a number. Um, we have 0 on the right hand side now and, and there's a quadratic equation. So we need to factorize the left hand side and then try and solve it. So it's going to be the long method. So press pause and see if you can factorize the left hand side with the long method. Okay, now I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it and go, go okay, 2 times negative 12 um, gives me, 2 times negative 12 gives me negative 24. Pairs of factors of that are, you know, 1 times 24, 2 times 12, uh, 3 times 8, 4 times 6. And if I look, try to get a negative 5 using one of these pairs. Well, if I look at my 3 and 8, you see if I had a positive 3 and a negative 8, these guys would add to negative 5, and they would multiply to negative 12, okay? So we split this fella up to be, the negative 5x gets split up to be, you know, plus 3x uh, minus 8x, and so we have, um, let's say, 2x squared plus 3x minus 8x minus 12. Now we factor these guys, and then factor these guys, right? So these two terms, we've got 2x squared plus 3x, and here you just pull out a common factor. Remember that? So you pull x out, x times 2x plus 3. And with these guys, you pull out a common factor. And they're both negative, so I suggest pulling out a negative number. Negative 4 goes into both, right? 4 times 2x is negative 8x, is 8x and 4 times um, negative 4 times positive 3 gives negative 12. So now we can see that these two factors are the same and these two terms are separated by subtraction so we can pull out the whole 2x plus 3 uh, factor from each term as 2x plus 3 times x minus 4 equals 0 but hopefully you know how to, to factorize with the long method by now so we should be able to do that so we factorize that and now we have a times b equals 0 therefore either a is 0 or b is 0 so either the 2x plus 3 equals 0 or the x minus 4 equals 0 and if I solve each equation I'll get the two solutions okay so simply on this one um, subtract 3 from both sides of course and I get you know 2x equals negative uh, 3 then divide both sides by 2 and I get x equals negative 3 over 2 or negative 1.5 on this one just add 4 to both sides and of course you get x equals 4. So I have either x is either negative 3 over 2 or x is 4 and those are the two solutions. And to check them we would plug, you know, plug negative 1.5 into the original equation and it would work. And then plug 4 into the original equation and that should also work. I'll just do this in my head. 4 minus 5 over 2 is 2.5, 4 minus 2.5 is 1.5, and 6 divided by 4 is also 1.5, so 4 works, and negative 1.5 will also work in there if you work it out, okay, or negative 3 over 2, okay. And we have x minus 6 equals negative 4 over x minus 1, and this negative is in line with the fraction bar, okay. So what I suggest when you see that is to write everything as a fraction, okay, and then you've got to try and make the bottoms the same, the first step, right? So how would you write x as a fraction? x over 1, how would you write this guy as a fraction? 6 over 1, okay? Now make all the bottoms the same. And remember to put parentheses around this guy so he looks like a factor, right? So multiply this denominator by the factor of x minus 1, right? And then you can also multiply the top by x minus 1, right? So you're multiplying this guy by x minus 1 over x minus 1. What about this guy? Same thing, isn't it? He needs x minus 1 on the bottom as well. So multiplying by x minus 1 and also the top by x minus 1, okay? So we have all the bottoms the same. Now we can just set the tops equal. Once again, it's just these are just, you're subtracting these fractions. Both bottoms are x minus 1. So we basically have, this is just one fraction on the left equal to one fraction on the right. Their denominators are the same. Therefore, we can set the tops equal. And so we can say, you know, x times x minus 1. Now minus 
6, right? Minus 6 times x minus 1 equals, and this is a negative, this top is, this negative 4 over x minus 1 is the same thing as negative 4 over x minus 1, with the negative in line with the 4, so it's equal to, you know, negative 4, right? Now press pause on the video and solve this one yourself. Okay, so when in, in, in three seconds, I'm going to do it really fast because I'm expecting you to press pause and get this all by yourself, okay? Okay, three, two, one, here I go. X multiplies in here and we get X squared minus X. Negative six multiplies in, we get negative six X plus six equals negative four, okay? Um, add like terms, negative one X minus six X gives me negative seven X. So X squared minus seven X plus six equals negative four get zero on the right hand side. We have a quadratic equation. It has an x squared term and there's an equal sign there. This is a quadratic equation so it's going to have two solutions. We need to get zero on the right and then factorize. So to get zero on the right, to get rid of the negative four, I need to add four to both sides and now I have x squared minus seven x plus ten is equal to zero and now the second step for solving the quadratic equation is to factorize left hand side. This is a short method. What two numbers multiply to 10 and add to negative 7? The answer is a negative 5 and a negative 2 multiply to positive 10 and add to negative 7. So this times this is 0. So we have a times b is 0, right? Remember, if a times b is 0, then either a is 0 or b is 0. has to be one of them, right? So we either have x minus 5 equals 0 or x minus 2 equals 0. And we solve each one, add 5 to both sides. So this gives us x is 5. And here we go, add 2 to both sides. And this gives us x equals 2, okay? So we have two solutions, x is 5 or 2. Are they both valid? Will either of them make us divide by zero in the original equation? Well, in the original equation, we have x minus one here, and because of this bottom, I forgot to say that x cannot be positive one, because it would be, you see, it'd be, it'd be, you know, negative four over one minus one, which is zero. That'd be negative four over zero, which is undefined, right? So at the beginning, we should have said that x cannot be negative, positive one. We found x is five or two. Both of these solutions are fine, right? Example 10 is a funny one. To example 10, there's actually no solution. But it's pretty quick to, to solve this one. You've already got the bottoms the same, don't you? You have this fraction equals this fraction. Both bottoms are the same, aren't they? So your first step is already done. So you can just set the tops equal. Because if this fraction is equal to this fraction, their denominators are the same. Their numerators have to be equal. So 8 minus x has to be equal to 5. And then solving that, subtract 8 from both sides. I have negative x, not positive x. Negative x equals negative 3. That's the same as negative 1x. Now divide by negative 1 on both sides, and I have positive x equals positive 3. x equals 3. When I check this, Okay, I'm going to have zero on the bottom. And once again, what did I forget to do? I forgot to stipulate that because of this denominator, x cannot be equal to, because look, x cannot be equal to positive 3, right? Because if x was 3, we would be dividing by zero, okay? So we should have said that x can't be positive 3, and then we solve the equation, we get x equals 3, we have to discard this answer. And just for just just as well, let's just check it for fun because this would be eight minus x over x minus three equals five over x minus three. Okay? Now if x was three, let's check that answer. See if x was three, right? What would you have? You would have eight minus three, that's five over three minus three is zero equals five over three minus three is zero. So you might say, oh they're the same. Well they're not though, because 5 over 0 is positive infinity or negative infinity. <laughs> uh, which, and either of these infinities are nonsense. They're not even numbers. Infinity is not a number. Because look, infinity plus 2. What's infinity plus 2? It's infinity. So, you know, this is undefined. And it's not even a number. And 5 over 0 is actually also positive infinity or negative infinity. 
Now that's so you're you're basically saying in a way that negative infinity is the same thing as positive infinity. And either way, infinity is undefined anyway, and so the whole thing is nonsense because we're dividing by zero, right? It's just undefined. So we have to discard the answer of x minus of x equals three because it's giving us undefined expressions in the equation. And so if we discard x equals 3, we're not left with any solutions, and we have to say, well, the answer is no solution. There is no solution to this. And the symbol looks like that, doesn't it? Nothing, right? So that's our answer. Our answer is no solution. Okay, um, example 11. We're going to get two solutions, and one of them we'll have to discard, okay? Um, so press pause and see if you can solve this one all by yourself. Okay, you press pause. I'm going to do it now, the whole thing, really fast in three seconds. Or, I mean, in three seconds time. Okay, three, two, one, I'm going to do it. We should have written this x is x over one. We should have tried to make all the bottoms the same. Both of these bottoms are the same, but we need an x minus six here and here. Okay? So if all the bottoms are the same, we can set the top equal. We would have x times x minus 6, okay? Then minus, minus 24 equals, and this negative can go up there, negative 4x, okay? Then you can solve this. Multiply x in, we get x squared minus 6x minus 24 equals negative 4x. It's an equation with an x squared term in it. It's a quadratic equation. We need 0 on the right-hand side. We solve these we, we we follow these steps for solving a quadratic equation. So we add 4x to both sides. Okay. We get x squared minus 2x minus 24 is equal to 0. Now we factorize this with the short method. 24 is 1 times 24, 2 times 12, um, 3 times 8, or 4 times 6. And we try and find two numbers that would add to negative 2 using these pairs. So using positives or negatives, well, what if we had a positive 4 and a negative 6? They, th these guys add to negative 2, and they multiply to negative 24. So with the short method, we have x plus 4 times x minus 6 is equal to 0. a times b is equal to 0, therefore a is 0 or b is 0. If, if these two factors equal 0, one of them has to be 0. So either x plus 4 equals 0, or x minus 6 equals 0. Solve each one, subtract 4 from both sides here, and we get x equals negative 4. Solve this one, add 6 to both sides, and I get x equals positive 6. So I have two solutions, I think. And once again, I forgot to say at the very beginning that because in the original equation we have x minus 6, here and here, basically. We created this x minus 6, so we don't have to worry about it. But we have x minus 6 on the bottom in the original equation, and because of that, we have to say that x cannot be positive 6. Because if it was, you would have, you know, 4x over positive 6 over 6, which of course is, you know, whatever. You know, well, it would be 4 times 6, wouldn't it? 4x over 0, because you got 6 minus 6. So x cannot be equal to 6. Now, what we got was x equals negative 4 or 6. But the problem is x can't be 6 because we would be dividing by 0 when we plug it into the original equation. And divide by 0 creates an undefined expression, so we need to discard this solution. Okay? Discard x equals 6 and so at the end of it all, we just have one solution. Which is of course x equals negative four. So the only solution is x equals negative four. So just to to to, to um to summarize it, we discarded x equals six and we found one solution of x is negative four. Okay.